There's always a problem that you never expect. Smell through a stone. Windless. What is that in your hand? First time I've worn this. Shipyard for the rich. La Ciotat. This major shipbuilding town relied on a frightening way of launching large vessels from the slipway, but more of that later. Sailing southeast from Carriola Rue, at last with a working iPhone, took us along a stunning rocky coastline to have lunch at anchor. We passed the location of the ancient Stone Age Cosca cave to spend time in Cassis. This beautiful town is overlooked by towering red cliffs and an exclusive castle hotel. Kelanks are rocky coves known for their natural beauty and secluded anchoring, if you can get in and drop the hook before anyone else does. Sailing through the channel between Eagle Rock and Green Island, the harbour finally came into view. In Mediterranean history terms, this port town is relatively young. It was officially recognised as a community in 1429. Today, this town mostly relies on tourism and leisure seafarers by providing safe harbour for small pleasure craft and services to super yachts. It is a vibrant, colourful and at times noisy mix of 19th and 21st century life. Preparations for a festival or something going on? According to that clock tower, it's three o'clock in the afternoon. It is. And it's a museum. So we'll go and see what's inside, shall we? Oh, yeah, it does say Hotel de Ville as well. Yeah, I thought I read in the tourist office that it said it was the original town hall. In July 1898, you can get yourself a brand new petrol driven tricycle. <laughs> Single cylinder. 1898. I don't think I'd like to try and cycle. They look so ungainly, don't they? Don't they? You have to have a big moustache to write. <laughs> He's like a character from Star Wars. Penitent. Three Brotherhoods, but yeah, could easily be George Lucas's creation, couldn't it? Sea Attack was created as an independent community by charter of March 1429. Just like the very first bike I learned to ride on, 50cc mobilette. Little alleyway, bike repairs. And where Patank was invented. It was. Yeah, very much an industrial idea. We know now that these two brothers, the Lumiere brothers, were the ones who invented the cinematography, was it called? Anyway, they invented the um, moving picture with um, being able to show a train arriving at the station at the sea attack. Looking a little bit threatening, that cloud. Ah, oh, well we made it back in just in time, didn't we? <laughs> we did. Flash of lightning there. Yeah. yeah. Just, it just broke right above us, and here's the hailstones. It's like when we were uh... on the road. Yeah. Oh my. This is a project to try and improve the anchoring situation. Currently, the windlass is um, taking juice from the house batteries through 
the um, the switch in there going straight through this terminal box here which goes forward behind this panel from there behind that panel all the way into the fore cabin behind that panel all the way to the remote switch there what I'd like to do is to take the juice from the battery down here which is for the bow thruster from the battery through the switch up through a conduit up here to behind the port panel to come back to the switch now that means that i'm going to have to pull the cables back through the alternative is to leave that cabling in place and to buy new cabling and new cabling isn't cheap we'd never be using bow thruster windless at the same time my thought is that if we can use the battery that's uh, already powering the, the bow thruster and in, instead of using the house battery then the, the problem that we've been having with it kicking out the uh, multifunctional display at the cockpit because it's drawing too much juice at that point will be eliminated so it's problem solved Right, stopping for a late breakfast because I'm not going to stay to this. It's never easy when you're trying to work out ways of being able to get cables run and so on. Um, you want to hide everything, but also you need them accessible for maintenance and repairs and so on. So it's a double-edged sword sometimes. Okay, that panel, can I get behind? No, that's the cabling there. behind there. Bicycle screwdriver set. <laughs> I think that's the only thing that's going to fit into that gap. Nope, that doesn't work either. Just can't get in. So that is, is the only thing that's going to work really. One down. But I can't actually get it. Yeah! Here we have the control box for the windlass. Sheena's doing some sewing, I think. Hello. Here your flip flops. <laughs> Give me the flip flops. More improvements. It won't flap as much. You won't have to have that piece of string. Yeah. That is the plan. Domestic switched off. Zero volts across from the negative bus bar there through to the switch so that's now safe so i've just switched it back on again because the the fridge is running off uh, that circuit because <clears throat> it's the the leisure domestic currently got 28 and a half degrees in the cabin what i'll do is i just need to get this cord ready so i've got some uh, pretty strong cord here in order to run through attached to attached to the eye of of that which is uh, sorry that one um, which runs all the way back and then I've got a, a cable that I can use at the other end but I also if I have a problem I can draw it back through using the cord. Theory is all well and good it's got to put it into practice now I don't want to switch off the fridge for too long um, so I'm going to switch it off and then disconnect and make sure it's it's safe Disconnected from the batteries. It's really difficult to see. Just at the wrong angle. Domestic battery coming in. Just there. And this one is the feed that goes to the switch. So that's tight. So now that lid can go back on. And now to disconnect from the negative bus bar. This might be a bit stiff. It really is stiff. Always a problem that you never expect. And that negative bus bar down there, where the black cable goes in, just here, 
there was a screw holding it there, but also at some point there was a screw holding there, but it sheared off in the threads. So I can't actually remove that from the bus bar. <laughs> anyway, that's boats for you. And I can't hang around because the fridge is switched off. Not the best way of doing it at all, by any stretch. But that's got it clear now. I'm going to have to snip the tyre up, I think, to get into that. Look at all that lot there. Two hands required. Right, so we've got that bit off. So that can come off. So I can switch the domestic back on again now, get the fridge going. Switch the fridge back on. I'm going to attach the cord through there. I don't think that hole is big enough, so um, can you pull the black? Oh, they've made those holes a bit tight, haven't they? Push it through a bit. Okay, and then give it a good yank. Now? Yep. That's it. Now you can pull the red through. Pull it. Oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. Let me just turn it. Push it back through. Okay, now, now just gently. Look, stop there. Hey, we're through. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm in proper clothes and things, apart from the top bit. <laughs> <laughs> the next bit to do is to uh, get the cables run all the way across, down, down into the battery box. It's now half past five in the afternoon, and um, I'm having been out on my bicycle to go to the Chandler's and also go to um, a DIY store called Bricolage, which is like a Bit of a and q in France. I bought some conduit. I only needed a metre, but they only sold it in two metre lengths. So um, that was interesting, cycling back with that on the bicycle in the traffic, but you know, we managed that without any accidents. <laughs> getting there slowly, but getting there. It's a bit like sailing, really. <laughs> Well, we now have the cables being run down here, through there, through there, and a new trip which I have installed there and the original switch basically is now operating as the um, isolator for the battery to both the bell thruster and the windlass. Now you're going to put some more conduit in and then hide the cables behind the panelling. Sheena is on her way out on a bicycle. She's gone to do some shopping. I'm still continuing to uh, get the battery cables hidden away. We're still in La Ciotat. We only intend to stay here two nights and uh, it'll be four nights. This is almost, almost done. Just need to put the covers on. That's back again now. So that's all done. Just tidying up, hoovering, etc. Then I can get the curtains back. I'm thinking about getting all this sorted out. Whose idea was it to change the bow thruster battery into the supply for the windlass? Yeah, okay. Well, it's noisy over there. <laughs> Yeah.
<laughs> you were chicken. <laughs> You say we have to uh, vacate before the wedding starts. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> it looks like a wedding. I thought it was only on the International, but it was definitely set up for a wedding. Pretty, though, isn't it? Oh. It's not over decorated. No. What are you thinking, it's a. Uh... Yeah, don't look up. <laughs> so, original naval architecture, equipment, hand-drawn slide rules, drafting board, a skill and an art. During our stay, we passed the Shipyard Museum daily and had to know more about boat building history in the city before we moved on. The natural bay of La Ciotat provides good shelter and in the 15th century, families built fishing boats. These skills transferred into building small cargo sailing boats called tartan. In 1835, entrepreneur Louis Bernay enticed English engineers to bring steam propulsion systems to the yard in La Ciotat, and the modern age of shipbuilding brought prosperity to the city. As demand grew for larger vessels, the yard responded with invention and ingenuity to compete and survive. Ship design improved and demand for longer vessels increased, so success in building good ships fell to space restrictions and safety concerns, which in turn prevented La Ciotat from winning orders. On the 19th of December 1987, the Mexican cargo vessel Monterey was the last commercial ship to be launched into the harbour, and the harbour was forced to close in 1988. People lost jobs and families suffered, but 105 determined workers put up a valiant fight against the odds for six years. They succeeded in convincing investors to transform the yard into a service and refurbish centre for an increasing number of pleasure yachts. Because 105 people continued to believe in a future for the families, today La Ciotat Shipyards is a world leader in providing superyacht refits and repairs. Time to move on. Say goodbye to La Ciotat. Well, that was uh, a great place. We've just been to the exhibition this morning and it's the Chantier exhibition, the um, shipyard, showing the history, 300 years of uh, shipbuilding. We're just about to go across the space, which used to be the launch area for the big vessels that they built. They would launch the big vessels from the slipway over there, right across the harbour, right towards the old, uh, that's the old town hall. And it just got swamped with the wave of the launch. But thank you, I see your town. What an interesting place. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Although, yeah, 
although you, you, you look at it, you think it's too commercial. Actually, it's not. It's not. Once you get into the harbour, the old harbour, it's not commercial really at all. You don't really notice it until you see the big crane. They're going to the uh, to the Kalang that we're going to. <laughs> First mate at the helm. <laughs> yeah, Captain nearly lost the, uh, the winch. Winch handle. I yeah. still had hold of it. No, I never made that noise. <laughs> <laughs> Is that me you'd bother again? I don't understand the crewing. Ah, okay. I think I need to let the head sail out a little bit. Still there. <laughs>